Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that's what I like to hear. It is good to be with you this morning. Oh, everybody's on this side. Come over here. <laughs> I'll get back to you. Don't worry. As folks are gathering, it is good to be with you this morning. Let us say good morning in some of the languages that we speak. And as people enter the sanctuary, our time together, they will no doubt hear us greeting and welcoming them as they arrive. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Maguanani. Maguanani. Bingalaba. Bingalaba. Mwabiyue. Mwabiyue. Mbote. Mbote. Jambo. Jambo. Namaste. 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 Nadima. 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 Ologe. 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 Buenos, Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Bonjour. Bonjour. Kaja na ai. Kaja na ai. Teri abiti. And if you're joining us from home, a special welcome to you this morning, whether you are watching it uh, Sunday afternoon when we tend to get these posted or throughout the week or looking back over services. And uh, it's important for us to remember, too, that there is a group of people here in our sanctuary, but we also have our services posted on our church website and on YouTube. And I can look at the metrics on our website. And we have folks who are joining us from as far away as Australia, all kinds of different places. So folks who have maybe come to LABC in the past, who have moved away, folks who are checking out churches, folks who are just Googling American Baptist Rochester and we show up as the number one search, whatever it might be. So we extend a welcome to our broader congregation as we gather together this morning. We have quite a few announcements. I'll point out a couple of them that are uh, particularly important to mention. Next week is Pentecost, so please come wearing red. If you want to know what red looks like, uh, Elizabeth and Ken have both uh, um, gussied themselves up in beautiful red today, and so uh, they are a week early, and uh, we encourage you to do just that. The Aging Gracefully and Joyfully group met this past week and had a wonderful time. The Laughter from a uh, behind that closed door that we could hear in our offices was absolutely fantastic. So there's information there. The next meeting is Monday, June 5th 
at one o'clock in the conference room. So please plan to join them. Community dinner. It says here Saturday, May 27th. That, that date is changing. Uh, we don't know exactly what date it will change to, but we will certainly let you know. Uh, it may be a little bit challenging for folks to volunteer on the long weekend, and we certainly will need volunteers, so we will get back to you with the new date. Any articles for the newsletter that need to get in for June, please get those to Ken as quickly as possible. The information is there. And garden team. Ken and Kadin have been out gardening around the building with uh, some help from other individuals. And they are looking to get two or three more people to kind of help keep an eye on our gardens. They went and bought some, some bushes and things like that, had a wonderful discussion between the two of them about where to place them. Um, Kadin was right and Ken was right. It was fantastic. Um, turns out they had different opinions. I think Kadin went. For the most part, yeah. <laughs> probably, pro probably a good move, Ken. Um, so if you're interested in being involved with them on that, please speak to them. There's no meetings or anything like that. It's just going to be trying to make sure that things uh, are able to bloom and grow as beautifully as possible. You'll see in the order of service, there's a couple of other announcements about Minnow and about VBS and things like that. So please make note of those and take a read through when you get an opportunity to do that. It is good to be here in this time and in this place together. I encourage you to get up, mill about a little bit, greet one another with uh, fist bumps or elbow bumps or high fives or waves or whatever you want to do, and uh, we'll get back together in a couple of minutes. I invite you to greet one another with a piece of Christ. <laughs> Responsive call to worship this morning. Let us gather in this space. We gather from many places. Let us center ourselves for worship. We are one in the spirit with joy in our hearts. Let us receive God's blessing. God's blessing is ours. We are God's beloved. Amen. Let us pray. Breath of God. Renew us in this time of worship. Help us set aside thoughts that trouble us. Help us pause the challenges of the world that taunt us. Pour your spirit out within each of us, that we may be re-spirited in this hour by your power and by your grace. In your name we gather, and in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together. Number 158. Come Christians, join to sing. Number 158.
word. Clap your hands. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All you nations, shout to God with cries of joy. For the Lord Most High is awesome, the great King over all the earth. He subdued nations under us, peoples under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. God has ascended amid joy, shouts of joy. The Lord amid the sounding of trumpets. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing to him a psalm of praise. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne. The nobles of the nations assemble as the people of God of Abraham. For the kings of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. Amen. Amen. Since Becca isn't here, I'm here to give the children's story. And I'm so glad you sat up front because I was going to invite all the kids to come up front if, if they want to. And you were right. We should clap our hands. How many of you, are you one of our kids? Yes. Good, good. I'll, I'll need your enthusiasm. How many of you know what's happening this weekend with a little, little round white ball. <laughs> and it's called golf. Have you ever heard of golf? Okay, good. We're having a big tournament here today, this, this week. And I made a mistake because I drove down East Avenue. <laughs> I didn't really, I'm not a golfer. And I've never been to all the golf courses, and I didn't really realize this golf course was on East Avenue. And do you know, there were cars parked on people's lawns oh my God. for $50. I saw a sign that said 100 Oh, I didn't see a 100 
Um, and the traffic was terrible, and I was late to where I wanted to go. But anyway, you know what people do at a golf tournament when, when uh, one of the golfers makes a hole in one, in other words, hits the ball, the ball right into the hole? You don't know what, what do the people do when that? Yes, they clap their hands, right? <laughs> Yay! Do you, do you girls play sports at all? No, none of you. Okay. Do you know friends that do play sports? What do they play? What? Do you cheer? Okay. And, if, and parents come to those games, and if one of their kids makes a, or if any of the kids on the, their team makes a, home run if it's baseball, or a goal if it's soccer. What do they do? Yeah. Or they shout. Yeah. Yay! That's my Kelly! Yeah, yay! <laughs> well, now this does have a point about God. <laughs> because this psalm is talking about we know that God is with us, right? So what do we do? We clap our hands. Let's clap our hands for God. Yay! And then we shout for joy. Yay! Yay for God. Yay for God. That's right. So God is always the winner in this life of ours. And it's important when we talk to God, not only to say, I would like this God and help my mother and I'm sorry that I did what I did, but we need to praise God because God is great. His nature is beautiful. His loving is wonderful. His justice is perfect. So as we end our story, Let's all praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Yay. Let us pray. Dear God, we do praise you. We love you. We seek you. And most of all, we shout for joy because you are with us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Susan. Let us sing together. Alleluia, sing to Jesus. The words are printed in your order of service. Let's sing together.
that every good and perfect gift comes from God. We also believe that we are caregivers for whatever gifts we might have received for the time in which we hold them. And part of that responsibility and caregiving is to help to make the world, we hope, a better place. And we know that there are so many needs in this time and in this place. And so we'll receive our morning tithes and offerings. And it does say in here, America for Christ offering. We held that last week. But I do know if you're anything like me, you may have gotten to the point where you got home and then found the envelope. And uh, so we'll also receive any America for Christ offerings that people wish to present today. And if you're visiting with us, and I know we have a few visitors here today, your presence this morning is your offering this day.
Let us pray. Dear Lord, please receive and bless these monetary gifts we present to you this day in the spirit to which they are given. Give us the wisdom to utilize them and multiply their value in order to glorify your kingdom on earth and to help bring justice and peace. Also, please accept our other talents and efforts to make witness to the world of your grace and love. Finally, let us treat other peoples and your creation in love as you have commanded us. Amen. Amen. This is our prayer time, and if any of you have special prayers that you would like to uh, speak, speak of, uh, I offer this opportunity. We got one prayer from Luella for her uncle, John, who has been sent home from the hospital so he could die at home. So we keep Luella and her family in our prayers. Are there any other special prayers today? Let's just keep Daryl Lance in our prayers. He continues to have real challenges. Thank you. Daryl Lance uh, is at, at home, went to, the, went to the doctor. You and I were both offered to do it, but you took him. Right. So we, we do pray, keep Daryl in our prayers. All right, let's pray together as we give glory to God. Holy creator of spring, you shower us with thirst quenching rain and shine glorious sun on our gardens. Our world is full of colors, many shades of green, a rainbow of flowers and the dark brown rich soil. Thank you for beauty, life bursting, from the ground and our joy. You are indeed, Lord, our creator. We pray this morning for nations around the world. Many leaders are meeting and discussing solutions to world problems. We pray for an end to warfare, an end of hatred for those not like us, an end to extreme poverty and starvation. Our hearts go out to all who suffer under proud rulers who stomp on their people. Bring love into the world, Lord. Help us to love our enemies as we love our friends. And may we speak out when we see unfair domination and injustice. We pray this morning for those who are recovering slowly from surgery, for some who are lonely and frightened. We pray for children and teens who have missed so much schooling that they're far behind where they should be. We pray for our church. May we be faithful in our calling and committed to new life in Jesus Christ. We attempt to be followers of Jesus' example and his words, but too often we fall short. Remind us to be loving, caring, giving, and just. Remind us that we can make a difference in the world. Remind us to listen to you as we are silent in your presence. We pray all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
ပါမိတော်မူကြီးကမောရှေ့ဤအနက်ဖြစ်ကြမ်းစာနိုင်ကောင်ပရောဖက်တို့၏ကြမ်းစာနိုင်ကောင်းစာလန်ကြမ်း
When we hear a story, we like to hear the beginning, the middle, and the end. And when we're able to do all of that, we have a much better understanding of the whole goodness and joy of hearing that story. So that brings us to our text today. This is Ascension Sunday. It's the Sunday when Jesus ascends or goes up into heaven. Now, I know there are many preachers who this past week have wrestled with this text. I know because a lot of the commentaries that I look at have the same general sentiment. Can't we just get to Pentecost? <laughs> because we can understand and we can explain Pentecost. But Ascension is one of those theological toughies that many of us as pastors really want to skip right over because it's hard to explain and it's equally hard to understand. I mean, in theory, it's quite easy. Jesus ascends. Jesus goes from this earthly realm into the heavenly realm. But how? But why? But when? But where? But the questions, they start to roll off our tongues. And I think sometimes what we do as pastors is we spend so much time trying to figure out how to explain all the, the nuts and the bolts and the details of all of these stories that we share from Scripture that we miss over some of the most important and simple facts about these stories. So I want us to spend just a few minutes with the story of the Ascension. Because if not, if we skip right past that and go straight to Pentecost, we miss part of this story. And the reality is, all of what we've shared in Lent, all of what we have shared in this Easter season, is a story meant to help us get a better understanding of who God is, who Jesus is, and who we are as God's people. This story of the Ascension, at its very core, helps us to reframe or rethink about God. It gives us a new view of God that emerges from this biblical text that we read about in the Ascension that Kadim and Don shared about. And I think one of the things that we need to look at very closely is what happens in verse 52. Verse 52. After Jesus had ascended, the disciples, those who were gathered around, it says here, then they worshipped him. Then they worshipped him. Now we read a lot about worship in scripture. We hear about it time and time again, how we worship God. And the first things the disciples do is they worship. But notice who they worship. They worship Jesus. These followers of Christ, all of these pious Jews, they knew that God alone was to be worshipped. And so the fact that now it says they worshipped Jesus after the ascension helps us to realize that we are no longer talking about God and Jesus, but we are talking about the one, the one who they are bringing together in this worship. They are acknowledging and recognizing, perhaps for one of the first times in a very real way, that Jesus was God. And our lens for thinking about God always then has to use this idea of a crucified, a risen, and a living Christ. Now many people, Christians included, seem to naturally lapse into this view of God that makes sense, this reasonable understanding of God. God is imagined to be perfect in the sense that God is beyond all limitations of time and of space. God is unchanging. God is all-powerful. God is majestic and sovereign. And God is eternal. And there are passages in Scripture to attest to all of these things. It's not wrong, but perhaps a little bit incomplete. The God who is now being worshipped by the disciples in our passage is also now the one who recognizes and acknowledges and experiences that Jesus experienced of loneliness, betrayal, rejection, thirst, and even the pain of death. It helps to broaden our understanding of who God is through the experience of the relationship 
with Jesus. So this text helps us to understand God more fully. The ascension of Jesus into heaven helps to broaden and expand our picture of God. We can no longer define God in a way that leaves God completely detached from human experience. The God who creates things and sets things into motion and then takes a step back, which is a theological understanding some people hold. Well, at the end of the day, right now, when Jesus ascends into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, it reveals a God who really and truly does understand the experiences that we as individuals go through each and every day a more vulnerable, maybe even a more approachable God. When we turn to God in times of distress and temptation, times of, of, of struggle, we're not addressing some aloof God who just kind of steps back from the realities of what we experience, but one who is able to comfort because that God now identifies in a new and powerful way with the pain that we experience and also assures us that affliction will not have the final word because it's the risen and ascended Christ who intercedes for us and nothing can separate us from the love of God. So this text is about more than just Jesus ascending into heaven. It really helps to reshape our understanding <coughs> of God. And it also helps us to reshape our understanding of forgiveness. I know there are many people who struggle with forgiveness. Many people who have done wrong to somebody else and, and just don't know what it means to be forgiven or, in the other instances, to really truly forgive those who have done them wrong. This text offers us a very strong, implicit and explicit understanding of forgiveness through this act of the ascension. We don't want to lose sight of the fact that the very appearance of the resurrected Christ to the disciples is first and foremost, above all else, a message of forgiveness. Mm. The ones who fled and denied Jesus are not reminded of their cowardice, not reminded of their, their faintness of heart, not reminded of their wrongdoing. Rather, the first words of the confused and bewildered followers, what they hear from Jesus is, peace be with you. He doesn't come in saying, all right, now we got to settle this because you guys turned your backs on me. <laughs> he doesn't come in and say, now where is Judas? Oh, right. He betrayed me. He took off. He doesn't hold that anger in his heart. He doesn't bring that to that instance, but rather he comes with the words, peace be with you. I, Jesus, bring my peace to you. And it's not a word that is only for his closest companions in ministry. This incredible word of mercy is to inform the entire mission of what the disciples do when he tells them repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in the name of Jesus to all nations. Not only was forgiveness for those who were gathered there, forgiveness is what Jesus wants the disciples to do as they go out into this world, sharing about the love and the truth of Christ, is to proclaim forgiveness of sins. The ascension of Jesus himself underlies this mission of mercy. It's so easy to overlook the actual way that Jesus took leave from his followers and get kind of caught up in that, trying to explain it and understand it that we miss what truly does take place. We're told that Jesus and his disciples go to Bethany where lifting up his hands, he blessed them. When he blessed them, it says he withdrew from them and was carried up to heaven. Jesus' departure is accompanied with a blessing and with lifting of hands. These are the very hands that bore the wounds. These are the very hands that were murdered on the cross. And his first commission to them is to go out into this world not with anger and pain and hurt, but to go into the world offering radical, inclusive forgiveness. Mm -hmm. These witnesses 
These people who bore witness to the execution are also the ones now who are to receive and carry with them radical mercy. So it's in this act of ascension, this, this story that kind of gets a little confusing and oftentimes we want to skip right past to the fun of Pentecost where we all get to wear red. They want to skip past that and get to that story that we like and we understand and that we want to carry with us. And when we do so, we miss what it says to us, helping to reshape our image of God, a God who is close to us, a God who understands and knows us. And to also be reminded of the incredible grace of Jesus and forgiveness, a message that I think many of us need to hear time and time again. So let us prepare to go as the disciples did. People who were perhaps overwhelmed, confused, worried, but regardless of all of these things, people who were reminded that they are forgiven, reminded of the incredible grace of God, and with that same calling to go into the world, to share mercy, to extend forgiveness, to show love. May we receive the blessing that the disciples received that day, and may it be our blessing. May we continue to worship as the disciples worshiped. May we go into this world with the love of Christ. Let us sing together our closing hymn. I have that it says, Go to the World. I'm assuming that's what we're singing. Excellent. Oh, and the words are printed in your order of service. Let us sing together, Go to the World. today and be commissioned to serve God in this world. Offer healing to the broken and care to the empty. Transform the world through your faithfulness. Amen. Amen.